Greetings, salutations, it's me, James, your BA Sensei, back with another Power Query tutorial. In today's video, we are going to do a conditional index. Now, the data set we're going to be looking at is, is a portfolio data, data set. So we have got the portfolio code on the left side over there, the different incremental dates over time. And then what we have here is your cumulative investment amount as it compounds and as, in, and as it grows. So what I want to do is I want to add a conditional index that basically starts counting the moment where I reach 120 or above for a specific portfolio. So you can see in portfolio one, we're basically going to start counting at 121. Okay, portfolio two, we're going to start counting at 122. And in portfolios where that never happens, we're just going to keep it at zero. So this is the conditional index. And I'm going to show you how to do this using the record. Well, enough talking, let me show you how to do it. All right, and as always, very first step is get the data into Power Query. You select your data set, go to data, go to from table or range. This opens Power Query. All right, it always disturbs me when it does that automatic change type and it changes dates to date time. Just go to date and change it to Day. For each of these portfolios, I want to do a grouping. So I'm going to go to transform group by. Now I'm going to say yes, let's say I'm going to do two groupings in this case, but just for the for the purpose of this video, you just need to do one actually, I'm just going to click on advanced, I'm going to say detail for the video. And I'm going to say do all rows, I'm going to add another one, just called all rows. And this is the details. So I'm merely keeping this detail for the video so I can show you what I'm transforming as I do it. I'm going to say, okay. So this now, you can see this basically returns, groups the portfolio by the portfolio codes, and then gives me a detailed table for each of the portfolios, right? There we go. All right. So the next step, I'm going to open my advanced editor, all right, in here. So I'm going to take the, uh, the group rows. You can see I created the, I'm just going to press enter over here. So this is the detailed video one over there. I'm not care. I don't care about that one. I'm just going to go to details. So the details one is actually what I want to show you. So everything from the each, I'm just going to press enter there. And I'm just literally going to delete everything in there. All right. So what are we going to do is we're going to do some steps inside of a record. I can do this in a nested let, but I'm going to rather use a record to show you what power lies in records. So how do you create a record is by using square brackets. I'm just going to open square brackets over there. Right, there we go. So now inside of the details um, column for this. So inside of the details column in this grouping, I'm now going to do all my logic in a record. So this is going to change into a record, right? Okay. Very first thing that I want to do is I want to count the number of rows in each table for each portfolio. So I'm going to create a new variable called row counter. And in there, I'm just going to say table because we have a table row count. Yes. And I'm going to give it the underscore which refers to each table and each row, right? I'm just going to say, all right. So now you can see we're actually creating a record and you can see what it returned there is exactly what we said. We, we have a variable called row counter and it counts the number of records in each portfolio. So you can see this record has six. So if I look at the table, there's six records. This one has eight. If I click on that, you can see there's eight records in it. So this is what that basically did. All right. So let's go back to the advanced editor. Now, second step, now that I have the row counter, the next thing that I want to do is I want to create an index for each table index starting at one and ending at the last row of each table. Right? So I'm going to create a new variable called index counter. Yes. And for this, I'm going to start, I want to create a list. I'm starting with curly brackets. I'm going to say this always starts at one up until so double full stop. That means two. And I'm going to go up until my row counter. Okay, this is going to create a list. I'm just going to say, okay. So now you can see in this record, we have a second value, a second record in our data set. And this says list. So I'm just going to, I want to show you what that means. So you can see in this table over there, we got six records and there's a list. I'm just going to click on this to show you what's inside. If I look at the list, you can see it does an index of six for each row inside of that table. If I did that for, let's look at portfolio five, which has eight records or eight rows, click there, 
you can see it's returning one to eight. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to now, let's go to the advanced editor. I want to create a new variable in there that basically determines from where I should start my count from. So you can see like in this case, anything from 120 above, it will start at um, row number five over there. It should count from there. So I'm going to call this count from rows, yes. And I'm going to use a function called list position of, which basically what this does is it basically looks inside a list and it looks for the position in the list of a specific value that you're looking for. So in this case, I know it comes from the column cumulative investment amount, which is that column. Yes. And let's say I'm looking specifically, if you look at that, um, that row there, I'm looking for a value of 110. So I'm saying looking for 110. I say, okay, so in this table over there, it should return a four for me. So let's look at there, a three, because it starts counting at zero. So zero, one, two, three, All right? So it found that at um, row four or index value number three. But if we look at some, somewhere where there was no 110, so like the next, the next data set, you can see there's no 110. The value it returns is a minus one, and we can use that property in our logic. So let's quickly go back. So now you can see this is actually a, not a problem, but we don't want to look for a specific value. We want to look for a value greater than or equal to 120. So how do we do that? So what we're going to do is we're going to use list transform to transform this list of the cumulative investment amounts. Yes, and I'm just going to say each underscore which represents every every single row within the list where it's equal to uh, greater than or equal to 120. Yes, but now you can see that's not we just want to return one value. So what this actually means is I want to look for where that is actually true. So count the position of from where it is true, right? So I'm going to say, excellent, comma, where you are true. And I'm going to say done. And basically what it says is, ah, that starts at position four. This one, there's nothing in there. It's greater than 120. This one will start at two. You can see zero, one, two. There we go. This record over there is going to start at row three. Zero, one, two, three. Isn't that cool? So we can actually use that. So the very first position where this condition is true. Next step. So now, now that we know how many rows there are, we have an index counter and we know where to start from, we want to now start populating our conditional index. So let's say conditional index variable, right? And we say if count from rows, which is what you saw now, yeah, is greater than zero, which means there's a match. You know, remember when we actually said like, if there's no match, it says minus one. Okay, so where it does find a match, yes, then basically take a list, repeat values, and it's going to start with zeros in curly brackets. And I want to repeat it for everything up to count from rows, correct. And then I want to say else, list repeat because this is basically um, for values that that never happened. I'm just going to put there in zero because it never found anything above 120 for I would say for the row count for the number of rows in the table. Right? Just another thing here. I'm quickly going to show you what this means. I'll say okay, returns a record. Let's just open one of these. So this one, we know 120 is reached over there. So I'm just going to click on record. And inside of the list, you can see it basically just has zeros. Because it's basically the first four zeros over there, right? That's not what we want. So let's quickly go back. I just need to append there. I need to say and return the index counter for me. All right, let's quickly see. So we're looking at portfolio one, we're expecting zero, 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 and then one, two. If you look at that zero, zero, oh shit, you can see we basically need to cap it at that one, two, the amount of rows inside of there. So that's not capping it at the moment. So what we need to go is go back to advanced editor and just in here, wrap it in list first n, yes, and we're gonna wrap it in the amount of rows in our table. So row counter, wrap it up, say okay. 
So now if we look at that, so you can see for portfolio one, we're expecting zero, 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 one, two. So if I look at that, it's saying zero, 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 one, two. Brilliant. We got it. We got it. Advanced editor. And I'm going to say records are pretty cool because you can do so much with the records. So let's say results table, right? In there, I'm going to say table from columns because this basically means from columns means a list is just a series of columns that we want to create a table from a list of columns. Each of these actually is columns, right? I'm going to say, yeah, in curly brackets, give me the date. I'm going to say date in square brackets within the curly brackets. Yes. Give me the cumulative investment amount, comma, and then give me the variable called conditional index. Yes. Okay, so I want to return a table from these three lists, right? And then I just need to put a comma there. And what I want to call in curly brackets each of these, I want to call that date, comma. I want to call the second one cumul amount. And then the third one I want to call index column, right? Okay, so if I press done now, you can see it returns a table. All right, so if I basically click on there, you can see the table contains exactly what I want. Let's go back. Inside Advanced Editor, what we can do is, what I want to do is I just want to return, I want to return, see at the end of your record, I want to return one specific record and in curly brackets, just say there, results table. And what it will do, it will return a table inside there. So now the easy step to do is just press that little expand and say, use the original column, yes. And there you go. And we can return it to Excel. There you go, magic. So now, hopefully you've learned the magic of what you can achieve with records and how to create a dynamic conditional index. Until we meet again, BA Sensei, signing out.